Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at the tax treatment of various business forms. These topics that we're going to be discussing today will be covered in an income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on a professional level. So if you do have a LinkedIn account, please connect with me. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, I strongly suggest you do create one. I do have a Facebook page. So if you like my Facebook page and you, could, you are welcome to connect with me on a personal level, you want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I house all my lectures and I have over 1500 lectures, including accounting, tax and auditing. I have a, link, a LinkedIn account as well as Twitter and a website where I house all my courses organized by chapter. In this session, we're going to be looking at the various business forms. So this is basically an introduction. This, this, this session is an introduction to many other business forms. Okay. So I'm going to be mentioning S corporation today, partnership, C corporation, and I'm going to be saying, we're going to see those topics much, much more in details later on, because when you operate a business, you can operate a business under different forms. You could run your business as a sole proprietorship, you could run it as a partnership. Uh, if you have an estate or, or a trust or estate, you have you could have an S corporation, also called subchapter S corporation. You could have a regular corporation, which is the regular corporation C, C as in Charlie Corporation, or you can form LLC, limited liability companies. Now we're going to be covering sole proprietorship, partnership. S Corp, regular corp, and limited liability very briefly today. And I, I, what I mean briefly is just give you a taste of them. We don't cover trust and estate. That's, that's going to be its own chapter later on. But eventually, each one of those partnership, we're going to have maybe two chapters, which is, we'll have a lot of recordings. S Corporation, same thing. We might have 15 different lectures. C Corp, we might have 20 different lectures on those. But now this is just given you a taste of it so it's very important that you understand those concepts before you dive into the corporation chapter before you dive into the partner partnership chapter and also in this session we will compute the taxes what happened if you earned income and you are running uh, running your business as a sole proprietorship versus a corporation so starting with a sole proprietorship what is a sole proprietorship sole means one one person is operating the business here you don't have to have any formal paperwork done. For example, I have a sole proprietorship. My YouTube channel is a sole proprietorship. It's a not, it's a not separate, separate taxable entity. This is important. This is important. So let's make sure we understand this concept because it's going to appear and again and again. So when I compute my revenues and expenses, when I take my revenues and my expenses, I compute them on schedule C, which I will show you in a moment. So I'll have my revenues minus expenses or deduction, whatever you want to call them, then I will get to net income. Okay. So guess what? This net income fly goes to my 1040. So this is my income. So the business, which is I'm going to call here YouTube, my YouTube business, which is what you are viewing now, and my income are the same. So my, my YouTube from income goes to me, goes to my 1040, and I have to pay taxes on that income as, as an individual, as mensor, as an individual person, I have to pay taxes on that money. Okay. So income and expenses of the proprietorship retain their character when reported by the proprietary. So if whatever income I have on my C, it retain its character when it comes to me. The new thing about sole proprietorship this year, we are going to, in starting this year till 2025, we're going to have the 20% qualified business income deduction, and this is going to be available to 2025. So from 2018 to 2025, we're going to have an additional 20% qualified business income deduction. Now, if you don't know what this is, I have two recordings over an hour and a half. So go ahead and check out the 20% qualified business income deduction. Let's take a look at Schedule C. Basically, it's, it looks like, an inc to a great degree, looks like an income statement. I'm just going to point out a few things. Uh, first, you have your income. So you report the income from the business. Then you deduct your expenses from the business. And as a result, you have either a net profit or a net loss. And uh, just give you an example, 100,000 in total income, um, 40,000 in total expenses. I'm just making these numbers up. So your profit is 60,000. 
okay then you're gonna have another deduction now here's what I want the 20% deduction you'll you'll have also the 20% deduction on your 1040 but here's what I want you to see if you examine all the expenses and if you want to you can examine them there is no taxes so on schedule C I don't pay any taxes on the 60,000 okay so there is no taxes on the 60,000 I don't pay any taxes okay in other words I made 20,000 60,000 that money not taxable yet we did not pay taxes on it therefore it goes to me and this is important this is important concept because this this business my YouTube business is not a separate entity my YouTube business is my income personally okay let's take a look at the second type of business which is a partnership business partnership business think of a partnership business just like a sole proprietorship but multiple multiple sole proprietorship it's it's a separate entity but does not pay tax does not pay tax so from a tax perspective all the income goes to the owners just what I showed you earlier now there is a form they do fill out they don't fill out schedule C they fill out a form called 1065 which will which we'll see shortly and it's called an information return and when I was in practice I used to be very familiar with that form I mean I have to admit that uh, I'm still familiar with it but it was I used to have dreams about uh, 1065 and 1020s and 1020s s but uh, that's beside the point so you do fill out um, uh, you, you do send uh, your income and your expenses and your deduction to the IRS that's only for information purposes you don't pay any taxes on the partnership itself now business income and expenses are aggregated in computing ordinary business income or loss so just revenues minus expenses now here's what you need to know about partnership certain income and expenses items are reported separately to the partners what are those separate items now I'm gonna list them and I'm not gonna explain why and what are the consequences I'm gonna give you a feeling like basically a sense of it but we're gonna have one whole chapter not whole chapter about separately stated item but there will be covered when we cover the partnership so basically separately stated items such as interest and dividend income long-term capital gain charitable contribution and investment expenses and those to be discussed much 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 more in details later those will be separately reported so what's gonna happen I'll show you the form in a moment so you're gonna have revenues and expenses then you're gonna have certain items so if if the partnership have dividend income dividend income flows to the owner if they have any interest interest flows to the owner if they have any long-term cap long-term capital gain it flows to the owner it's not it's not part of the 1065 okay so partnership ordinary income or loss and separately reported items are allocated to the partners according to their profit or share um, a profit and loss sharing ratio so whatever if, if the if the business made a profit or if the business incurred a loss and you you qualify to get 20 percent you're gonna get 20 percent also if they have separately stated items such as interest dividend income long-term capital gain those are also allocated to you separately and they're allocated through a form called k1 again if you prepare taxes and you'll be very familiar with that term uh, with that with that form k1 okay so K1 reports partner partner share of partnership ordinary business income and loss and separately stated item. So on the K1, you will get they will tell you how much ordinary business income you have from the business and what uh, what's your share of separately stated item. Actually, I'm just thinking right now. I'm not gonna show you the K1 because I did not include it in this recording. But I could assure you when we cover the partnership chapter, I will show you a K1. So now I'm gonna show you the 1065. Each partner reports those items on his or her own return separately and this is what a 1065 looks like pretty much like an income statement you have a section where you report all the income then you have a section where you report the deductions which which are the expenses then revenues income minus deduction gives you the profit then what's gonna happen to that profit it's just also just work just work up some numbers real quick so you have total income all in all hundred thousand and total deduction all in all um, ordinary business deduction total deduction let's make it 40,000 so ordinary business income loss is 60,000 what's gonna happen is this what's gonna happen is this this 60,000 and let's assume we have for simplicity let's keep it simple we have two partners and each partner has 50% sharing in profit and loss so of that 30 of that 60,000 30,000 go to partner a and 30,000 go to partner B and partner a and partner B 
pay taxes on that profit. Partner A and partner B pay taxes depending on their individual income tax rate. So notice, if you examine those deductions, if you examine the deductions here, there is no taxes. So the partnership doesn't pay any taxes on the profit. There's no place where you pay, okay, here's your taxes, pay taxes on that profit. You don't. The profit goes to the owner and the owner pay taxes on that profit. It's a pass-through entity. Just like a sole proprietorship, the income goes from the owner the income goes from, I'm sorry the income goes from the business to the owner same thing with a partnership now i just i, I don't want to uh, simplify this but i have to simplify this there are many types of partnership there's a par general partnership limited partnership um, llc so on and so forth just we're talking about partnership in general here the next thing we're going to look at is you could operate your business using an s corp okay an s corp is a separate entity but only pay taxes on the built-in gain. Don't worry about the built-in gains. Now we'll talk about this later. So here's what I'm going to tell you. From a tax perspective, although it's named a corporation, from a tax perspective, the S corporation is like a partnership or a sole proprietorship. What does that mean? It means the, the profit from the business goes to the owners and the owners pays taxes. So simply put, sole proprietorship, a partnership and S corporation, the three forms of business, the profit goes to the owner. The owner pays, the, the profit goes to the owner and the owner pay taxes on that profit. Okay. Although partnership and S corporation are separate entity, the taxes is not, the taxes goes to the owner. Okay. Um, S corporation, they filed a form called 1120S. And again, when I was in practice, I, you know, during the tax season, we would prepare many of those. Okay. Similar to partnership taxation, ordinary income or loss flows to the shareholders to be reported on their separate return. And we also have a certain item flows through the shareholder and return their separate character, which, which are called separately stated items, like long-term capital gain, charitable contribution, anything that goes through the S corporation, they are reported separately. Now you might be saying again, why? You will see why later on. Just, you, I don't want to kind of you know, explain this because it takes time to explain it. So the S corporation, I'll explain it later, but not in this session. The S corporation, ordinary business income or loss and the separately reported items. Again, we're going to be talking about those much, much more in details are allocated to the shareholder according to their stock ownership interests. Okay. That's all what it is. And we prepare, uh, we, we, we prepare something called, we prepare the income and deductions on 1120 S notice the word S S4, S corporation. So we report the income. Uh, again, $100,000 of income. Um, I don't know, $40,000 of deductions. And $60,000 of profit. And let's assume we have two owners. Again, let's keep it simple. We have a 50%. One person owns 50% of the company and the other owns 50%. What's going to happen? 30000 goes to A, to owner A. Notes I'm, I'm using the word owner because it's kind of a corporation. And 30000 goes to owner B and they pay taxes, A and B pay taxes, pay taxes on that profit, pay taxes on that profit. Notice if you examine all the lines here, there's no taxes. So the business don't pay taxes. Who pays taxes? The owners of the corporation. The money goes to them and they have to pay taxes on that money. Okay, so let's move now to C corporation. And this is when we refer to a corporation, when, when, we, when we just say the word corporation in the real world, what we really mean is C corporation. This is what we mean by regular corporation. Now we are talking about really a different animal here, a different type of business. C corporation are subject to an entity level federal income tax, which result in what's known double taxation effect. Now, C corporation, what's going to happen is this. They're going to compute their revenue. They're going to re report the revenues minus expenses they're gonna get to something called i mean this those are not the, not the technical word but i'm just uh, illustrating the point we're gonna get to something called profit before taxes then the corporation's gonna pay taxes and it happens to be now 21 percent, which is easy then we're gonna have net income so what's different about c corporation the corporation itself will pay the corporation itself will pay taxes. This is what's special about C corporation versus S corporation. The corporation S, which is what we saw here, no taxes, no taxes. The corporation itself don't pay taxes. Who pays taxes? The owners. Same thing with the partnership. But C, C corporation are a little bit different. Okay. 
and C Corporation report its income and taxes and compute a flat tax rate of 21%. Now this wasn't that simple. It used to be we used to have a uh, we used to have a uh, progressive uh, corporate income tax, but now it's 20 21%, which is easier for you as a student. Okay? And we report income and losses on form 1120, which I will show you shortly. When the corporation distribute income, the corporation shareholder report dividend on their income tax return. So let's go back and work some numbers. Let's assume we have $100,000 of income minus $60,000 of expenses. That's going to give us $40,000. Then we're going to pay um, 21%. So let me just calculate this real quick. So we're going to take 40000 of profit before income taxes times 21%. We're going to pay taxes of 8400 now we're going to take 40,000 minus 8,400 and the corporation made a profit of 31,600. So what's going to happen is this. Now the, the corporation may or ma may or may not distribute the profit. Okay. So if they do distribute the profit, the profit goes to the owners. Okay. So let's assume we have two owners, owner A and owner B, owner A and owner B. Now, and let's assume also for simplicity to, to kind of make this, uh, to, to illustrate the point, we're going to assume that the corporation is going to distribute all the profit and dividend, which is that's not how it happens in the real world. You don't have to, dis you don't have to distribute it and companies don't distribute it. And for simplicity, I'm just going to go 50-50. So we have two owners. So owner A is going to get 15,000. 800 of dividend and owner B 15,800. Now notice the profit from the company was taxed once here. Now what's going to happen? Owner A will pay taxes on the 15,800. How much taxes? Well, it all depends on it all depends on owner A tax rate. Owner B will have to pay taxes as well. And how much you'll have to pay taxes based on um, taxpayer B tax rate, whatever their tax rate, because each individual ha will have a different tax rate. So notice we pay taxes twice on the same amount of profit. The corporation paid 8,400, then the owners will pay each whatever their amount of share is. So it's double taxation. And if you want to simplify it, let's assume they pay 10%. Each one of them pay 10% just to simplify. So the taxes are paid twice. So hopefully you can see the point. Okay. Um, thus, income that has already been taxed at the corporate level is also taxed on the share, shareholder level. Okay, so double taxation stems from the fact that dividend distribution are not deductible by the corporation. So the, 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 when, when they distribute the dividend, okay, the dividend is not deductible. So the dividend, when, when we distribute dividend, the dividend is not an expense. Dividend is not part of operating the business. Dividend is part of financing, part of, you know, outgoing financing. So it's not an expense. So dividend is not an expense. So what happened? The government, they want to kind of alleviate this double taxation. What they did is they allow you, they allow you a, an alternative, you know, a special tax rate for dividend. So basically we're going back to the qualified dividend income. And remember it's taxed at 15%. It actually tax at 0, 15, and 20. When is it taxed at 0%? Low income taxpayer, which we're going to see the numbers later on. It's taxed at 20% when you're a high income taxpayer. But if you're in between, you're not too low, you're not too high, it's taxed at 15. So you may say, you, you might be asking yourself, hold on a second, could you give me when is it taxed at 0? When do, when do you consider you, know, you are a low income taxpayer? We did it in a, in a separate session. I'm going to show it to you again when we work an example. Just know you have three rates, 0, 15 and 20. 20 for the rich, I'm just put it in quote, zero for not having a lot of money and 15 for people in the middle. Okay, now we're going to see them. Although don't, don't worry about the, the, the term rich and all that. Okay, these rates also apply to long term capital gain. Okay, so the, the 0, 15 and 20 percent applies to long term capital gain as well as the dividend. So the same thing that you learn for long term capital gain applies to dividend. Now this is a C Corp. Um, C Corp. Notice C Corp. Also, it looks um, C Corp perform, which is eleven twenty. It also looks as income. And again, I, I used to prepare C Corp, but not as much as eleven twenty S and ten sixty five. So when you are dealing with mom and pop, it's either 
you know, small businesses, they're either 1120s or 1065, mostly, or at least what I used to work, okay? It doesn't mean I did not work with 1120s, but during the tax season, they were mostly 1120s, S corporation, and 1065, which is partnership. But this is what 1120 looks like. So basically, you add all of your income, and we're going to talk about their income. Their in the way the income is reported is different than S corporation, but we'll talk about those topics when we cover the corporation itself. So we have income of 100,000. And we compute all the deduction. The deductions happens to be, I don't know, 60,000. Notice here it's taxable income before operating loss. Don't worry about that as well because we're going to talk about it later. So taxable income is 40,000. Okay, 100,000 minus 60,000 equal to 40,000. Don't worry about NOL. We'll talk about those and special deduction. We'll talk about those later. So notice what, here's what I want you to see. I want you to see this, although I, I, I mentioned it and I talked about it. But I want you to see it physically. Line 31, it could be on a different line for a different year, but happens to be total tax. So notice the corporation will pay taxes. And I remember we um, I just computed this if it's 21%. So they're going to pay, put it in a different color, they're going to pay 8400 And this is something I did not do when I showed you the 1120S and when I showed you the 1065. And I, and I pointed out that there's no tax. But... Regular corporation get taxed, okay? I know I'm, I keep repeating myself in a different way. I told you, I showed you, but I also want to show it to you on the form so this way it will stick in your mind. Because when you're studying for your CPA exam, you don't want to have any doubts about which one is a tax flow entity and which one is not, and what does that mean? I just want to make sure you have it, you have that strong foundation, okay? So let's talk about uh, corporation versus other form of business. Because if you notice, the corporation was a little bit different than the other ones. The other ones are similar, especially in terms of taxation. Um, when comparing uh, C corporation to other businesses, there are a number of factors to consider. One is the tax rate. Now it's 21% flat rate, which is easier. But in prior year, we used to have a schedule, which I will show you in a moment. The character of the business income is important. Tax attribute of income and expenses don't pass to shareholders. We don't have something called separately stated items for corporations. Okay, And you will see what does that mean. Um, when we talk about separately stated item. So if you have a tax favored income, you should not be operating as a C corporation. So let's assume your income comes from uh, municipal bonds. Municipal bonds are not taxable. You don't want to form a C corporation and have that income flow through it because it, the, the tax attribute don't, don't goes to you. Okay, as well as capital gains. Capital gains, the same thing. They, they, there's no such thing as long-term, short-term capital gain. So you don't have any, any, uh, any alternative or uh, or favorable tax because the corporation deals with that income all the same. Same thing with business losses. Losses are not passed to the shareholder but retained by the corporation itself. However, partnership and S corporation and Schedule C, you might be able to deduct some of that losses. Okay, employment taxes. Sole proprietorship taxpayer net income is subject to self-employment taxes, which is 15.3. And if you make too much money, there's an additional taxes. Uh, if you operate as a corporation, CNS wages are subject to payroll taxes. So you can you can be you can be a uh, an employee and you're subject to payroll taxes. Now, what's the difference between self-employment and payroll taxes? Well, you have just have to do, sit down and make your computation to see which form of business is more favorable for you in terms of employment taxes. But th those are some of the consideration you would take into account if you want to operate as a C corporation or partnership. If, if, there, if you have more than one owner, obviously, or a sole proprietary or an S-Corp, if you have one or more. Okay? And as, as, I, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, prior to 2018, the way S-Corporation computed their taxes was a progressive, for example, between 0 and 50, 15 percent, between, you know, the additional 25,000. Now you're in the 25 uh, percent tax bracket, then from 25 to 100, it's, it, it escalated very quickly, 34 and from 100 to 335, you'd be in the 39% tax bracket, so on and so forth. We, we, no, we no longer use this. Now it's a 21% flat rate with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. Let's take a look at an example to, to illustrate double taxation. Also, I illustrated, but let's take a look at it from a more formal example. So let's take a look at this. L Corporation report taxable income of 100000 in 2018. It pays corporate tax of 21000 This leaves 79000 of which all of it distributed as dividend to Ashley, who is a 43-year-old individual and the corporation's sole owner. So here's what we have here. We have income of 100000 Then 
the business pays taxes of 21,000. This leaves 79 taxes. So this is taxes paid by the business. And this 79,000 goes to Ashley. Ashley is the only owner. Now Ashley reports 79,000. Uh, report 79,000 of income, then Ashley is going to deduct 12,000 in standard deduction, which leave her taxable income of $67,000. And it's all dividend because this money coming from the corporation. Now, what's gonna happen is this. Um, this $67,000 is dividend, therefore it's subject to 0, 15 and 0, 0, uh, I'm sorry, 0, 12 or 15, depending on her on her uh, on her tax rate so here's what's going to happen the first 38,600 she's not going to pay any taxes on it why not because for the capital for the dividend we have a special special rate up to 38,600 you don't pay any taxes on this so when she got the 67,000 the first 38,600 she's in the zero percent tax bracket from a cap from a dividend perspective okay then the additional one hundred dollars it's subject to twelve percent and you're gonna see why this in a moment twelve percent not in a moment I'll show you the the slide and scale in a moment then the remainder the twenty eight thousand three hundred is subject to fifteen percent at this point once you reach so notice so let me show you how this work I know I did this before, you're supposed to know how to do this, but I will do it here. 38,600 plus 100, that's 38,700. So copy this number down, 38,700. Copy this number down. Notice up to 38,700, you're in the 12% tax bracket. As long as you are, but zero and up to 38,000, I wish they made a 30, 38,700, you pay zero on your dividend. So notice, but no, the number is for dividend 38,600, okay? So notice the additional 100, the additional 100, you pay either 12% or 15. You either pay your ordinary rate or 15, whichever is lower. For that additional $100, you pay 12%. Now, anything above this level up until you reach around 400,000, you'll pay 15%. So that's why the remainder which is 28,300 is subject to 15%. Now, if you are asking yourself, what the hell is he doing here? Go back to chapter three. Chapter three and chapter 13. In chapter three, I make this, I explain this, then in chapter 13, I explain this. You wanna make sure you know this, okay? So all in all, she pays taxes on her personal level of 4,257. So notice what happened. The corporation paid 21,000, I'm sorry, the corporation paid, yes, 21,000 in taxes. Let me highlight the taxes. The corporation paid 21,000 and she paid 4,257. So all in all, they paid taxes of 25,257 on the same, on that $100,000 of profit that the corporation uh, experienced. Now let's assume Ashley operate her business as a sole proprietorship. What's gonna happen is this. She's gonna have $100,000 in profit. She's gonna deduct her standard deduction. It's gonna bring her down to 68. Then she's gonna deduct 20,000 for qualified business income. Okay, and what's gonna happen, she's gonna pay taxes of 10,900. As a result, operating the business sole proprietorship result in 14,357 savings on her taxes. Okay. Um, so basically, if you're saying what did the, how did how did she compute the ten thousand nine hundred? I'll show you how she, we computed the ten thousand nine hundred in a moment. But hopefully, you see that the ta the the money is taxed once, which is ten thousand nine hundred. Now let's take sixty eight thousand. So what we do, we're going to go to the table, and we say this is an individual, and they fall within this tax bracket here. So the taxes are. $4,453.50 plus, she's in the 22% tax bracket, um, 68,000 minus 38,700, and that amount is 29,300, and that amount we're gonna multiply it by 22%, plus 6,446, plus 6,446. And this is how we computed the tax. You should know how to do this. This is a review, but uh, plus 4453, and that's the 10,900. 10,900. And this is how you came up with 
10,900 in taxes. So notice that profit from the business, if it's a sole proprietorship, it's only taxed once. Now you might be saying, why don't, uh, why don't Ashley operate as a sole proprietorship? Well, there are other consideration which we'll see later other than taxes when you are uh, operating a business, okay? So let's take a look at a couple more examples. Okay, the first one is E and L, Ellie and Linda are equal owners in Outer Enterprises, a calendar year business. During the current year, the enterprise business has 320,000 in income and 210,000 in expenses. In addition, they have a long-term capital gain of 15,000 and makes distribution to Ely and Linda of $25,000 each. So from the business, we make a distribution of 25,000. Discuss the effect of this information on the taxable income of Ely and Linda if they operate as a partnership. So what is the effect if they operate as a partnership? The first thing you need to know, the partnership is a not, is a, not a tax paying entity. What's gonna happen is this. Uh, they will take 320 minus 210 Okay, and that's going to be the profit for the business, 110. Okay, now again, this profit, what's going to happen? It's going to go to, some of it, it's going to go to Ellie, and some of it's going to go to Linda, and they're going to pay taxes on that profit themselves. Okay, remember, they also had a $15,000 of capital gain. Again, the $15,000 is not part of this. It's separately, and it goes, some of it goes to Ellie, some of it goes to Linda on Schedule K-1. Okay, and this, this also go on Schedule K-1. So the, the profit is on Schedule K-1 as well as the capital gain. Now, you have to remember that this $15,000 that goes on Schedule 1, it's going to be subject to 0, 15, or 20% because it's a long-term capital gain and it's going to retain its character for them as a long-term capital gain. Okay? Now, they took $25,000 out. Each one of them took $25,000 out of the business. How is that going to affect their taxes? It's a... It's not going to affect their taxes. It's going to reduce, and we'll see later what does that mean. But write it down, reduce their basis, reduce the basis in the business. Just write this down, we'll explain it later. So the 25000 that they took out, it reduces the basis. This is if they are operating as a partnership. Now, what happens if they are operating as a corporation? Guess what? Practically the same. They will take revenues minus deductions, will get 110000 of income, that 110,000 is allocated to Ellie and Linda, which they'll pay taxes on it. And they're, they're not telling us, you know, if it's 50, 50, 60, 40, it doesn't matter. Okay. Also, the 15,000 is reported separately and also subject to the tax preferential, preferential treatment. And their withdrawals also reduces their basis. But remember, when they reduce their basis, it cannot be below zero. Also write down, not below zero. And don't worry what this is for now. We'll talk about the basis later on. It's a topic on its own. Okay. Now let's move and assume, let me change colors here, and let's assume this business is operated as a C corporation. What would happen under those circumstances? Well, what would, what would happen under those circumstances, we are going to have 320 plus 15,000 minus 110. Okay, so we're gonna take the income from the business plus the long-term capital gain minus the expenses from the business, and that's gonna give us taxable income of 125,000. Now, what's going to happen that 125,000, it's going to be subject to taxes. So, you know, they're going to be this 125, you know, they'll pay 21%. The corporation will pay 21% on it. Okay? That's that that's how it, that's what happens. Okay. Then, the $25,000 that it, that went to Ely and Linda, remember they took $25,000 out of the business. This $25,000 is subject to 0, 15, and 20%. 0, 15, and 20%. Because they took it out. The withdrawals, the withdrawals is considered here dividend. Okay? The withdrawals is considered dividend. But remember, the $15,000 is part of the corporation. So this $15,000 did not get any tax favorable treatment. So um, this is basically regular income, considered regular income versus long-term capital gain. As far as the corporation is concerned, this is regular income. And again, we'll talk about this later on when we talk about the corporation, but the point is we don't have separately stated item. That's that's the first thing I want you to see. So all the income 
is considered part of the corporation, subject to the taxes at the corporation, then the withdrawals, the dividend, the 25,000 that each one of them got, is considered dividend, and it's subject to 0, 15, and 20 percent. Let's take a look at another example, okay? Purple Company has $200,000 in net income for 2018 before deducting any compensation or other payment to sole owner, which is Christine, and it happened, Kristen happened to be single. She claims a $12,000 standard deduction. Purple Company is Chris, Kristen's only source of income, ignoring any employment tax consideration, compute her after-tax income. Okay, so Purple is a sole proprietorship, and Kristen withdraws 50000 from the business during the year. Okay, so Kristen claims a $40,000 deduction for qualified business income so she's going to get this forty thousand dollar deduction twenty thousand times twenty percent so let's see what would happen if she um if she operate as a sole proprietorship if she's operating this business as a sole proprietorship what's going to happen is this we have two hundred thousand of income minus forty thousand dollar qualified business deduction qualified business income deduction then she's going to take twelve thousand in standard deduction so all in all, the taxable income will be 148,000, 148,000. Now for a single, let's see how much 148,000 we pay taxes on this. So if we are dealing with 148,000, the individual is single, they fall within this tax bracket. So it's $14,089 plus, she's in a 24% tax bracket, 24% of the amount above 82,500. 82, so again, what's the, it's 148, okay? So let's take 148, uh, 148 minus 82,500, that's the excess amount, 65,500, and we're gonna pay 24% on that, that's 15,720 plus, plus 15,720. So all in all, the taxes is $14,089 plus $15,720. That's $29,810. $29,810. Okay, $29,810. So basically, uh, that's the taxes that, that's the taxes that she pays. So simply put, if the business is bringing 200,000, she's gonna have to pay 29,810. Therefore, their net take home, basically, after taxes from the business is 170,190, uh, 170,190 dollars. This is Kristen's profit after she pays the taxes on the, uh, on the business. Now, and you might be saying, what about the $50,000 withdrawals? The $50,000 withdrawal, they are not taxable as sole proprietorship. They're not taxable, okay? Because the whole business, the whole income is taxable to her. Now, let's assume Purple is a C corporation and the corporation pays all of, it, all, all of its after income tax as a dividend to Kristen. So here's what's, here's what's gonna happen now. Now we're gonna have uh, 200,000 of income before taxes, then we're gonna pay 21% taxes on this times 21%. This is how much the corporation will pay. So times 21%, that's 42,000. Now 200,000 minus 42,000 in taxes, that's gonna give us basically corporation after tax income, 158,000. Now, what we said, we said all of this, all the 158 goes to Kristen in terms of dividend. So and it goes to it goes to her. It goes to her. So 158 goes to her. Kristen's gonna take the standard deduction, 12,000, and that's gonna leave her with 146,000. That's taxable income. So notice the corporation, let me highlight this the corporation already paid forty two thousand dollar in taxes on this two hundred thousand then Kristen she, her taxable income is 146 now Kristen will have to pay taxes on that dividend Kristen will have to pay taxes on that dividend so 146 thousand in taxable income which is dividend all of it is dividend therefore it's subject to 0 15 and 20 percent so now I have the rates for you for the 0 15 and 20 percent so zero percent applies 
uh, for a single taxpayer if the taxable income does not exceed da, 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 this is for married uh, single 38,600 so up to 38,600 she doesn't have to pay any taxes on that dividend then as long as as a single you don't get to 425,800 you would pay 15% so let's see we said she has 146 so Linda has 146,000 in dividend so here's what's gonna happen of the 146 the first 38,600 the first 38,600 she doesn't pay any taxes on it why because from a tax perspective she's she's uh, da -da 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 -da. she's right here in this tax bracket minus 100 so up to I'm um, oh, sorry 12% she's in the 12% tax bracket minus 100 that's why I hate I wish they made it 38,700 then the that additional $100 to make it 38,700 $38, additional $100 she either pays 15 or 12 she either paid the, the pre preferential treatment or her ordinary rate whichever is lower her ordinary rate happens to be lower therefore that's multiplied by 12% she, she's gonna pay on this amount which is twelve dollars now so of the 146 she already used up thirty eight thousand seven hundred so let's see what's left 146 oops not used up already taxed 146 you already taxed thirty eight thousand seven hundred which is technically only 100 was taxed but the other is tax-free what, what that left us with 107 300 now we're gonna take 107 300 and multiplied by 15 percent why 15 percent because her tax rate becomes 22 24 guess what 15 is lower they allow you to take 15 percent why because this is dividend so we're going to take this uh 107 300 times 0 0.15 that's 16,095 16,095 dollars so 16,095 dollars plus twelve dollars her total tax on a personal return uh, sixteen one oh seven that's her personal taxes so notice what happened here as a corporation she paid on that she paid on that uh, two hundred thousand she paid personally sixteen thousand one oh seven and the corporation paid forty two thousand notice all in all you know that's 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 more taxes than a sole proprietorship when we did you know when we did a okay let's take a look at c and c purple corporation is a c corp and the corporation pays Kristen a salary of 158. now what's going to happen is this we have two hundred thousand dollar then the corporation paid Kristen 158 which gonna make because in a corporation you can you can employ yourself you can be an employee of the corporation and that's a deduction for the corporation because you you paid yourself it's a salary what's gonna happen that's gonna keep the corporation with 42,000 of uh, taxable income then the corporation is gonna pay 21% taxes on this which gives the co which pays 8,820 in taxes so the corporation pays 8,820 but remember this 158 it's it, it's gonna go on Kristen's W-2, so she's it's gonna be her her gross income minus the standard deduction on a personal level, twelve thousand. What's gonna keep her with one hundred and forty-six thousand? Now she's gonna have to pay taxes on this one hundred and forty-six thousand. This is no longer dividend. This is not dividend. Okay, this is not dividend. What she did is she took the deduction. Now she's gonna have to compute her taxes. She's gonna have to compute her taxes based on the one hundred and forty six thousand one hundred forty six thousand therefore you just come over here and this is where she stands it's fourteen thousand plus twenty four percent of the amount above eighty two thousand five hundred so all in all if we if we compute her taxes under this scenario all in all she will pay twenty nine thousand three hundred and thirty in, in taxes between what what the corporation paid and the uh, uh, and uh, what she paid so 21 29,330 now you can do your comparison saying well um, as a sole proprietorship how much did I pay as uh, a versus B versus C and you could basically organize your strategy what's the best way to do it is it better to take out the dividend 
okay because christians after after tax income under b if you remember this after tax income under b it was only uh, it was actually 141,893 so after she paid taxes on the dividend after she paid taxes uh, on the corporate money it was 141,893 if you look under c she's going to net 128,670 after paying taxes on the corporate level and paying taxes uh, after paying taxes on the corporate level and paying taxes on uh, on her double you just have to do those computation to figure out which is which uh, let's take a look at non-tax issues and selecting an entity form so yes taxes play a, a big role in selecting how should you how should you form your business but there's also liability that plays a role sole proprietary and some partners have unlimited liability for claims against the entity and that's the reason why you don't operate as a sole proprietary or a general partner so if you can you can be a limited partner or you can form an llc or an escort then you have limited liability capital raising generally speaking corporations and partner to to a lesser extent can raise large amount of capital for entity venture remember when you are uh, pulling your resources with other people then it's easier for you to raise money than if you were by yourself transferability corporate stock is easily transferred easily sold but partners must approve partnership interest so in a corporation it's easy to transfer your ownership to another individual continuity of life in a corporation the owners and the business are they have a separate uh, uh, the separate life so basically the corporation exists indefinitely okay centralized management corporate actions are governed by a board of directors so the management is centralized partnership operation may be conducted by each partner without approval of the other partners so those are non-tax issues so if you want to operate a business what should you you know how should you operate the business the last type of business we're going to be discussing is the llc so the llcs are state entities so basically you would you would organize your uh, your business under an llc for state entity uh, what's going to happen is this is an llc a partnership a corporation or, or a sole proprietorship and this is what's interesting about an llc as as far as 1988 as far back as 1980 the irs ruled that it would treat qualifying as llc as partnership so it's an llc it's a limited liability company it sounds like a corporation but what we're saying is from an irs perspective so the irs says yes it is yeah you might have incorporated it in your state or you might not have to but from our perspective we can also treat this from a tax perspective as a partnership now why is this important as a partnership because as we learned earlier if you are a partner if you are if you are treating your business as a partnership the income is only taxed once so what the IRS says it comes with this disregarded entity term this regarded entity basically they're saying uh, I don't care what how you how you are incorporated under the state just i can i'm willing to treat you as a partnership tell and you're going to see that now you have to tell the IRS if you want to be treated as a partnership so it's disregarded entity in a sense that i don't care how you are organized i can treat you differently i can treat although you're a corporation if you want to be treated as a uh, as a for tax purposes as a partnership i will treat you as a partnership so it gives you the best of both worlds what's the best of both worlds it's good it's going to give you a major non-tax advantage so from a liability perspective you are still a corporation from a liability perspective you are a corporation so from a court's perspective you are still protected but from a tax perspective the IRS says look I am willing to allow you to be treated as a proprietary or a, or a partnership for that for tax purposes which is good it means you, you're not taxed twice so it avoids the double taxation and there was a lot of confusion about this there was a lot of confusion until 1996 when the treasury regulation when the treasury regulation based a treasury department issued a regulation saying just all you have to do now to tell us how you want to be treated check the box regulation and by the way owners and an llc are called members so simply put an llc is a blended is a blended form of business it has a corporation characteristic from a liability perspective and partnership characteristic from a tax perspective Part partnership or S corp, which is a pass through entity. So now what what they're saying is check the box regulation. It allows the taxpayer when you start the business to choose the tax status of 
an unincorporated entity without regard to the corporate or non-corporate characteristics. So you don't have to tell us whether you are a corporation or a corporation, just tell us how you want to be taxed. But generally speaking, entity with more than one owner can elect to be classified as a partnership or a corporation. So you tell them if you want it to be a partnership or a corporation, entity with only one owner, obviously the partnership is not an option, can elect to be classified as a sole proprietorship or a, or an, or a, or a corporation or an S-corp as well. If you made no election, if you have a multi-owner entity, so if you are a business with many owners, it's treated as a partnership. If you did not elect and you are a single business owner, you are treated as a sole proprietorship. So this is the LLC. So this is what we mean by disregarded entity. They don't care how you are corporated or incorporated. Just tell us how you want to be taxed, basically. And this is the form that you fill out, 8832. I'm not really familiar with the with the term that much and it's not only this page it's multiple pages but this is the form that you will tell the IRS how you want to be treated and this is a summary of the different type of tax treatment of business forms for example this is the sole proprietorship partnership S corp regular see basically it's a summary of everything that we said if you want to if you want to pause it and look at it that will be good now if you're studying for your CPA exam um, make sure you understand these topics very well because we're going to be covering each one of them. We're going to have maybe two chapters about partnership, um, two to three chapters about corporation, and one or two chapters about S corporation. So basically, we're actually what we're doing here in this session, we are setting the ground, and actually we're going to start with corporation. So the next topic I'm going to be covering is regular C corporation. Then we'll move into S, then we'll move into a partnership. Uh, but this is basically setting the ground, planting the seed for those topics. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. Good luck and study hard.